Hello and welcome back to a new episode. In today's video, we will be doing part two in the DK Oldies reconditioning series. And the system that we will be working on is this PS3 Super Slim. Uh, the model number is CECH4301A. If you remember in the DK Oldies unboxing video, uh, I'll have the link in the description below, as well as at the end of the video, so you can check it out if you would like. This system has a bad laser, and something is rattling around inside. Now, I was going to originally do just the laser in this video, but there appeared to be interest in other facets viewers wanted to see in regards to the PS3s. So, in addition to the laser, what I decided to do was to film the entire teardown process and the refurbishment process that I do on these systems. So, in addition to doing the laser, we'll be stripping it down, cleaning it up, uh, we'll replace the clock battery, which was also requested by viewers, uh, as well as replacing the thermal paste. And then we'll finish it up with a nice software update, and we'll test it with the game. So, without further ado, let's get started. So, first things first, we gotta get into the shell. So we'll start off by removing the cover for the hard drive. Just moves to the right side and just pops right out. And it's fairly dusty in here. Now you notice there's no hard drive in here. Uh, this is actually the four gigabyte model. So this one just has four gigabytes of memory, but then you can expand it with the hard drive, which actually isn't really all that bad. Next up, we gotta peel away this pesky warranty sticker. because there's a screw right in there. One of the feet's already missing, but we have a couple more we have to take off. I believe it's actually just this one here. Maybe this one? I don't remember. Yep, there's a screw in there. So we're flipped back over, and now we're just gonna slide this other piece off. Just slide it to the left and then push it back a little bit. This, I'm just gonna do my best to kind of pry it up. Oh, crap, I missed something here. Whoops, sorry about that. In my zeal to get this thing open, I completely forgot uh, this cover on the front held in with a screw. So now it should come off. And while we're at it, we're gonna remove the rest of these Torx bits or screws. Now the one thing uh, to keep in mind with these screws on the side mirror the hard drive is that they are a security Torx so if you don't have a kit <clears throat> and you need to get a bit for it which I would say just get an electronics kit I have a Amazon affiliate link in the description below uh, to get you the tools you, I use but basically it's just a T9 up oh, T8 sorry security bit it's a little dusty so I'm just gonna vacuum this off real quick We got the top cover off. In the front here, we got four screws that we need to remove. And then flipping it over to the back, we have the one screw right here. And this appears to be broken here. I don't know if that was for me or not. Or maybe it took a hit, but we'll figure out what to do with that later pushed down so I don't think that that was me. I wonder if this took a hit at some point. And then on the top of the drive we have two more torque screws that have to come out. And now flipped over we got the four case screws we have to take out. And 
and flip it over. Yeah, so this thing's actually not too bad to take apart. The only thing that I always noticed about every slim, super slim that I've taken apart is that it's like, it's very flimsy plastic, so, I mean, the chances of like breaking some, a piece of plastic is pretty good. Wow, this thing's filthy. So you do want to just take your time and be careful. We're going to vacuum some of this out. Hmm, so I believe I found what is rattling inside. I don't know where this gear goes to, so we'll have to investigate this one. Alright, so now we can work on getting the drive out of here. It looks like we got some ribbon cables to remove. So we got one down here there we got this one here and this one in the back all right and the whole thing comes out uh we got another gear where did these come from Next up that I want to remove, I want to take out the power switch. Just slides right out. And the continue unplugging things. So we'll take out this antenna. I believe this is for the Wi-Fi. I'm pretty sure on this model, on the Super Slims, they have a combination chip for the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, so I have the feeling it's for both. Just unscrew it for now. So it looks like the wire goes underneath, so it'll probably just be easier to remove that when we get this whole thing out of here. So probably next thing up is to take care of the power supply. So we have two screws to remove for the power supply. First one's here on the side. Let's go ahead and do that on this one. And then we'll turn it. And we got one right here. And the connector is all the way down there, so I'm just going to remove it from up here. And it should just lift right out. Wasn't really at the best angle for that. And look, more dust. Yeah, not sure if it's gonna really come up on camera, but this power supply is pretty filthy. So we'll have to figure out how to get in there and clean it out. So we need to get the motherboard out of here. So it does look like we got some screws. Here's we got one right here. Actually, I'm gonna use a smaller screwdriver for this. These are pretty tiny screws. And we'll start over here. They should all be black screws. I think I just got two more left here. also held in over here. Yeah, those go on the plastic. Okay, we're loose. Ugh. Oh my god, so dusty. A new vacuum is getting a workout. Yeah, 
gotta say, just as a little update since my unboxing video, I'm liking this thing. It's doing a pr pretty good job. And it's actually really funny, that video absolutely tanked. <laughs> Nobody seems to care about vacuums. Great, so now that this is out of here, it'll be a lot easier to remove the antenna wire. It just kind of snakes around. And it goes to the back of the motherboard here where it's just held in. And we just have to pop it out. Just like that. And while I'm at it too, I'm just gonna actually remove these because it'll just make it easier to clean ribbon cables and whatnot. While I'm at it, I'm gonna unplug the fan. Okie doke, so we got a few more screws to take off. These screws are a little bigger, so I'm gonna switch back to another bit. And get these off. Really wanna get this fan out of here is one of the big things. I think these screws hold it in. These two here that I'm taking off now. And then we're gonna remove this pressure piece here. This actually presses into the, I forget if it's the CPU or the GPU in this case. We'll find out, but we gotta get in there anyway, so might as well take it off. And yep, there's dust even on the screw. So yeah, this, this dust really penetrated into this console. So it's actually good we're getting into here. Yeah, it's fairly dusty underneath. Oh, we got more stuff to vacuum. Alright, then we're just gonna pry this shield off. If it wants to come off. There it goes. Oh yay, more dust. Man, just with the amount of dust in this thing, you would think this thing has been extremely well used. What I can't remember is if this was the PS3 in that lot that had, uh... Oh right, if this was a PS3 that had like one game on it, which that's a lot of dust if it only had one game. Okay, so... Next we want to remove the fan. So we got one, two screws I see. So we'll just get this out of here. This fan needs a proper cleaning. Actually, I wish I had like an ultrasonic cleaner or something for this job. Oh, wait, no, there's three screws. There's one right here by where the SATA ports are. Or at least were. Alright, that should be enough to get it loose. There it goes. Yay, another dust bunny. And I'm gonna fully take this fan out. The wires just kind of sneak around here. We'll just put that in the clean pile. So this will make it a lot easier out of here to well, clean whatever mess is on here. Seriously, $20. Less than $20 is what I spent on it. This has made my job so much easier. It's cutting down on so much time. I mean, obviously it's not done yet. I'm just trying to get the bulk of this out of here. It'll still get a proper rub down. All right, so I want to shift back our attention to the circuit board here. So I really just wanted to shift back over to the CPU and GPU here. I want to see. I mean, the thermal paste is 
slightly pliable, but it's also kind of chalky, so... Yeah, this was, this was due for a good servicing anyway. But, uh, we'll get back to the board later, but I did just kind of want to take a look at it and see how bad it really was. Yeah, I mean, it's really not a whole lot left here. I did want to shift the focus for a minute back onto the top of the shell where the lid mechanism is. Because I believe that that's where these two gears came from, because there's no other moving parts in this console. Except for the mechanism that opens and closes the lid. Now I don't know, I can't really tell what exactly broke. I see what looks like a couple broken plastic pieces. So... This is kind of a problem. Because I have a feeling that these gears sit here and here. Because the eject button does not work and I did notice that when it when I came in, but this is just completely broken and I just don't remember how this goes back together. I might have to go to my storage unit because I think I have a lid there that works. I mean, it's pretty beaten up so I can't use it, but at least I can see how the mechanism is supposed to go back together. But if my theory is correct and, and the two pieces here that look broken, actually, now you're not going to see it on camera, but there's a silhouette in the dust here where a gear was. So yeah, I think that they went here and here. So that's problematic because that means that's broken and I couldn't, and I don't see those nubs anywhere where I can glue them back on. So we may have to come up with some kind of solution or maybe just leave it be. Because at least you can still open the the lid with or without the eject button. I would just have to disclose that when I go to sell it. So the next thing I need to do now is I need to get the model number of this laser because I gotta order a new laser. So I'm just gonna lift this out. Unclip this. Now that's free. So we're gonna actually clean this one by hand because I don't feel like taking out all these ribbon cables washing it but all right so what are we dealing with here uh, where are you seriously it's usually just like a model number is that it there 451 so I was browsing here on the Amazon and it looks like I was right the model number is 451 which you'll see in the uh, lower left hand corner below the uh, QR code and when you go to look for lasers for the super slim I know of two different types of laser this particular one only has one lens but they also sell them as two lenses I don't believe they're interchangeable so yeah it looks like on Amazon well I would get it well today's the fourth and I get it between the 17th and the 29th if I order it here so I gotta try and find a different option. Maybe I could just get the laser because the entire uh, deck here is actually still good. The only thing that's wrong with it is the laser. So I'll see if I can find just the laser. Hopefully it'll be a little cheaper, but uh, we'll see. Other than that, let's go to the sink and we'll get everything cleaned up. Whoops, I lied. I completely forgot I wanted to take apart the power supply. So there's only, looks like four screws holding it together. This is something they definitely do not want people getting in. <laughs> oh, okay, there's a couple tabs here. There's probably one like right here too. Uh, 
All right, I'm starting to see how this is getting together. All right, on the front of the power supply here, it looks like there's two tabs that need to get pressed in. One right here, and then one right here. So we're just gonna continue to keep working our way around until this all comes apart. So now that it's apart, I can point out where the tabs are that need to be released. So here we got, what is this, the, oh, this is facing the motherboard. Um, we got one tab here that needs to be pressed in, one tab here. So if you have like a spudger, you can. And then on the side, there's one here, and then one here. And then there's two, corresponding to here, it's clips here, 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 and here. But those just kind of seem to have pushed out with a little bit of force, so they weren't held in too bad. But yeah, aside from this being dusty, we'll put that in the pile, take a look at the board here, and just kind of giving it a visual inspection, everything on here looks fine. I don't see any bulge capacitors or anything like that, and it did work, so I'm not going to worry much except basically clean this. Alright, with this clean and everything apart, now we can go to the sink. So you all know the drill. Soap, water, we're just gonna let all this stuff soak for a little bit. So next I want to focus on the fan here, it's pretty nasty so we're going to just spritz it down, put some alcohol, and I did sacrifice some of my micro, one of my microfiber cloths, so I'm just going to wrap it around. Yeah, so we'll just speed through this process, I don't think anybody needs to watch me for 10 minutes cleaning these fins. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it ain't perfect, but it's definitely way better than it was before. Not bad. It worked out pretty well. So the next thing I want to clean up now is just the shielding here. I mean, it's still pretty dusty even after the vacuum, so... And then we'll clean off the thermal paste. So now we're going to remove the old thermal paste, I'm just going to use a spudger and just scrape it off. It's just how I do it. And uh, 
little bit that's still on the heat pipe. Spritz it with some alcohol, let it soak for a sec. Okay, we got off pretty much all we can get off. So we'll just set the shielding aside and we'll move on to the motherboard. Okay, so it's the next day now. Um, the shell should be pretty much dry. So I kind of took a step away from the project for the night and then now I'm back. So uh, we're going to now clean off the thermal paste on the motherboard. Clean it off. A little alcohol. It's coming off pretty easily, so that's good. If it's really dry, it can sometimes be a real pain. So with the thermal paste off, now the next thing I want to do is I want to replace this uh, CMOS battery here. I know, I think I said clock battery on uh, the intro, but I've been working on a lot of uh, PS2s and it's mess me up there <laughs> anyway so um, this was pretty requested that I show it now the CMOS battery it is responsible for keeping time as well as some other stuff on the system so people tend to get like really um, concerned about this going dead and I mean it is pretty normal I mean think about computers like after like 10 years or so they start to go bad and you have to replace it it's kind of the same thing with the PS3 so what we will do is we will pop it out. So I'm not sure if it's something that I did wrong or maybe somebody can clear something up in the comments, but every battery holder that I've ever used, you push it forward and then it pops up. But there were these two tabs that were holding it in and it wouldn't go forward any too much further. So it looked like it broke a couple of the tabs in. Now it doesn't seem like it's going anywhere, but I'm gonna just err on the side of caution just to make sure it stays put. So I'm gonna take a little bit of a electrical tape Yeah, I don't think that's going to go anywhere. And now it's time to put the thermal paste on. So I'm going to be using the Arctic MX-6. Now, this is supposed to be one of their higher end ones. And given how hot the RSX and Cell tend to run, I think it'll help it along a little bit. And I can already hear people's keys tapping on how I'm putting this on. Everybody's got an opinion on it. It's always so funny reading it online and people, people's uh, opinions on applying thermal paste, which I would love to hear about. So definitely feel free to leave any tips or tricks in the comments. Now with the thermal paste on, we'll just put the cover on. And 
this is gonna go down with the curved end facing down. What this is doing is it's putting pressure on the cell processor. We got the four screws. Let's look for the arrows on the shielding. I think they go right in. Alright, so we, before we put the motherboard back in, I just want to put the, get back together the power supply. Okay, it's back together. I just want to point out something real quick before we go on to the next part. Uh, in a previous take, I was actually having a lot of bit of fiddliness on trying to get this back together. So what I discovered is that as you're snapping the shell together, you got to take the power port here and pull it out. And then everything will snap in because I was having problems with this side going down. So just something to keep in mind. So I screwed up. I forgot to put the fan on before I put the shielding on because this has to go in together first before you apply the thermal paste and put everything back together so I have it apart now I'm gonna put the fan on and then I'll just have to reapply the thermal paste and take it from there so three black screws one goes here One goes right there. And then the last one's right here, where the hard drive goes in. I'm just going to route the wires. Just leave it like that for now. Okay, with that embarrassment out of the way, I'll reapply the thermal paste and then we'll just skip ahead to the next part. Now we get to put this back in the case. It slides right in. First things first, the screws for the RSX. Then we'll just work our way around.
Now we can start plugging stuff in. We'll start with the fan since it's right here. Then we'll screw in the Bluetooth Wi-Fi antenna. And now the task of running this wire. So I'm gonna go underneath the hard drive caddy. So it's gonna probably poke back up into it, so I'm just gonna use my finger to guide it through. There we go. And just run this wire a little neater. He's got to put the power switch in. Yep, that's nice and clicky. And then just connect that ribbon cable right there. And then the last piece of prep that we can do is just plug this in. And then the final thing, I'm gonna put this ribbon cable in here. That's for the disk drive. Okay. And now the power supply can slide right in. And then plug that in there. So this is as far as I'm going to be able to get along with this tonight. I am waiting for the part to come in, so it'll take about two weeks, so we'll just transition to that. So it's been about two weeks now, and the shipment from AliExpress came in, so I have the laser right here. Now, I did order two other ones as well, so I got three of them totaled, and that's really just in case this one's a dud. Then I wouldn't have to wait another two weeks for another one to ship in, but... Either way, I'm actually pretty happy with the LA Express shipping. It, it actually came, it was supposed to come next week, but it came about a week early, so that's pretty cool. Alright, so let's open this up and see what we got. So I'll also leave a link in the description as well to the listing in case anybody would like to order it themselves. So, just comes in bubble wrap. And it is the entire deck, so replacement on this should be easy. And we'll do a slight comparison here. So the original one is here on the left, and this is the replacement one here on the right. And just looking at them, uh, I don't think that this is a knockoff. It actually looks pretty factory from Sony, so... It could be new old stock, I don't really honestly know how these AliExpress things work or these Chinese sellers work, but yeah, just kind of doing like a visual inspection. It looks completely spot on to the, the one that I'm taking out, so that's good. And before we put the new laser deck in, I just want to give this a clean real quick. Now I could have actually just bought the laser, but I decided to get the whole deck because, um, well, the, the replacement deck versus just getting the laser, I think was like two or three dollars more. So it's like at that point, why go through the extra work to replace the whole thing? Or just to replace the laser? When this will be a much quicker and easier job just replacing just the deck. Plus, so I, then I would know that all the parts are new. 
so I don't have to worry about anything else wearing out. And then on top of that, I can use those other parts from the deck. In case like I get one in that has like a bad spindle or something along those lines. So with this, you're going to want to hook it underneath and bring it down. Eh. And then we're going to connect the laser. Sorry about the crappy angle, it kind of sucks getting in there. That's it. And we got some things we need to connect. Let's lift this back up a little bit. We got the one ribbon cable in the back here. And sorry about the crappy angle. One of these days I'll get like proper camera equipment. <laughs> we got this one. Actually, we'll put the laser in first. Yep, that's in. And then one more. And then just for testing, we'll just vaguely toss this on. All right, so I did actually make an executive decision about the lid. I am actually not gonna fix this because there's no way for me to fix it with the broken gears. Uh, I will just disclose when I sell it that it just has to be open manually, but it'll, it'll still function, so I'm not worried. I right, got a controller all hooked up to it. Let's see what happens. Right, so, so far the system is functioning. That's a good sign. <laughs> so, let's throw our game in and see what happens. I'm also going to change out this uh, USB cable. It's really loose in that port, and I think it's the cable just really worn out. So the test game we're gonna use today is a game that I haven't put in my collection yet, so it was just the quickest thing I could find. And that's Medal of Honor Warfighter. Yes, yes, I know, don't judge me. All right, that's a great start. Picked, it up, picked up the game, that was fast. And of course the game has to install. All right, just bear with me. I'll be back in a few. Never experienced Warfighter. I just know it's been, it was uh, not well liked. We're offshore, proceeding to target. Be ready for the extraction point. Just saw the target head your way. Simple, we're in, we're out. Get 
the next thing we're going to do is we are going to go into the settings and update the system. But first we got to sign into my network, so we'll just skip ahead. And then we'll just update it to version 4.9. One eternity later. And the update's finally complete. So I'm gonna call the video here. When I initially tested it, I did notice that the USB ports were gripping the cable kinda loosely, but it did work. But it didn't I didn't really go too far in terms of testing from there. As I was playing Medal of Honor, I did have issues with the loose ports getting the controller to charge. Now it kept basically dropping the connection. I could finagle them and get it to charge, but with them being so finicky, it isn't living up to my standards. So I made the executive decision to replace those ports, which stinks since I was hoping to get the system sold quickly, but it'll be a much better system if I put in the extra work. But hey, that also means more content for the channel. So make sure you subscribe if you haven't already, so you don't miss part 2 when I replace the USB ports on this PS3. With that being said, Thank you so much for watching, like, share, subscribe, and all that good stuff, and leave any questions or suggestions in the comment section below. Catch you on the next video, and remember, fix it, don't ditch it. Have a good one.